It's been quite a while since we've had a boot fair find, but not too far back, I actually managed to snag a £7 gaming laptop. This right here is the Acer Aspire 5920G, a laptop I bought from the now local boot fair in the area, and the only one I was actually able to attend this year. Featuring a Core 2 Duo mobile based CPU, oh yes we're talking some serious power here, along with a removable Radeon graphics card, it's genuinely quite the unit. It's close to being maxed out with 4GB of DDR2 RAM, upgrading that to 8GB is possible but good luck trying to find the sticks that'll work, it's got a subwoofer setup, a Blu-ray drive, it's even got the original hard drive in it which seems to be working absolutely fine. It's a 7200RPM 250GB drive, which back then was definitely something to boast about. It's even still usable today, maybe a bit on the small side but it does work. Still, given it's from the boot fair, how much of this laptop really works. Well, given this video would be pretty pointless otherwise, and the video length already sort of gives it away, that means it does work, but it's not without its own set of issues. Now, as soon as I got it back from the boot fair I went to turn it on, and it booted to a corrupted Windows XP install, where it would probably go black and then crash out. At first I assumed it was just an issue with the OS, but that was only the start of this nonsense. So I took this machine outside in the lovely autumn sunlight and gave this little powerhouse a bit of a clean up, new thermal paste and just got rid of all the dust. Which was never too much of an issue given that this laptop was actually a bit of a gaming laptop back in the day and was designed to be taken apart and upgraded. So all you need to do is remove a few screws and you're started. None of this flipping over the motherboard nonsense. But anyway, let's get it all cleaned up. cleaned up I dropped a 120 gig SSD into things just to speed things up, as it offers us a clean slate to try and get an OS installed onto and goes nice with that new thermal paste and the fact that this is a very clean looking laptop now. So I originally started with Windows 7 to try and install and that just crashed so I tried it a few more times and it would still crash to a black screen at the same point and it didn't make much sense because the installer was seemingly working. So I took it down a more legacy route with Windows XP, which would make it through to the disk formatting part and then promptly crash to the same black screen. So what was going on? Well, it didn't look like thermals. Nothing was getting hot, and with the laptop seemingly still being turned on when it crashed, I assumed it was a GPU issue. Once again, the laptop was going to have to come apart so I could remove that little MXM graphics chip, a HD3470 mobility card, which isn't actually a terrible chip for a laptop, it's actually got a little bit of a punch. And it went punching its way into the oven for 5 minutes at 200 degrees, and that seemed to work. So I put it back in the laptop, and did it fix things? Well, no. So it can't be the GPU, can it? It seems like that's able to display things properly, and even made it further into the OS install than before. It just won't let the laptop install an operating system. It seemed like the operating system was conflicting with something, something maybe broken inside the laptop. By this point I was debating on whether this boot fair find was actually a worthless piece of junk, which I don't often like to think, I like to try and save these things, and I thought before it goes into the bin, I'd try and install Windows 10, with the only disk I had lying around, the original 2015 release from 6 years ago, which for some unknown reason actually worked. Perhaps it's down to it not understanding the laptop all too well and not enabling broken bits and pieces with the drivers it comes with. Perhaps it's because it's a boot fair PC and they're just plain weird because that's why people are getting rid of them. But we did have this little Acer up and running with an operating system. So by this point you're probably wondering just how well did it do in the benchmarks. Starting us off with Gmod didn't actually give me much hope. For some reason it took quite the variety of settings and resolutions to actually achieve a 60fps frame rate. Still, with these tweaks we had Gmod staying pretty stable on the laptop, perhaps it's down to it only having 4GB of RAM. 
perhaps it's down to Windows 10, but to start us off with for once, we didn't actually have that much of a good time. Luckily, it was all on the up from here. Next of all, with the modern 2021 release of RimWorld, with even a few mods that auto-installed from the Steam Workshop. With some smaller map sizes and a 1024x768 resolution, the game ran really smooth. Once you got past 8 or so colonists, there was a degree of slowdown when you sped things up, but not enough to make the game unplayable, just a few frame drops around to that sort of 10 to 15 FPS area, which happens on a lot of machines. So that Call cool 2 Duo does deserve some credit for that. Fable the Lost Chapters here, proving that Gary's mod was a bit of an anomaly, as it ran with a native resolution, virtually the highest settings on offer, with a few of the texture and lighting options on medium to achieve a near full 60fps most of the time, as I went through my usual benchmarking area of fighting enemies causing havoc, all that kind of nonsense. It did leave the frame rate capped at 60fps, which I decided to leave on, because it definitely provided a smoother experience, as the CPU definitely was able to provide more than the graphics card could, which could lead to these weird spikes in frame rate. Still, for an experience on the go, it's frankly brilliant. Taking it even more modern, with Skyrim running in predominantly low settings and a few options on medium just to make things a bit more clear and visible, the performance could be a tad sporadic. However, in general, while adventuring around, there were no problems with performance. Although combat, as you can see, could cause a little bit of slowdown. Still, for a £7 laptop, it's better than the PS3. But can it run Crisis? Well, apparently yes. Sure, it looks and runs far worse than Skyrim or Fable did, but you can indeed get your Crisis fix on the go from a cheap old gaming laptop. The CPU was being hammered at 100% the entire time, and the GPU was too, so at least our old hardware was seeing a good degree of utilisation, even if it was for some less than stellar visuals and performance. Now a gift to me from Shallow there over on the Discord, or Fast Rock Productions over on YouTube, with Shovel Knight Spectre of Torment, which shows that even modern indie titles will run really nicely and performance won't ever be an issue. We dropped about one frame the entire time I was testing this out, and I reckon that was probably more down to background tasks with Windows 10 than it was the title or laptop itself, so performance in a lot of these modern and simple titles is still A1. But finally, the game we've all been waiting for with GTA 5, which actually ran really well once I went into the INI file and turned down a few of the settings there. We even went online and messed about quite a lot, which surprised a lot of us which were in a Discord call at the time. Performance stayed above 30fps most of the time, but background tasks could bring this down, so this is why I had to virtually close down everything in the background to achieve these results. But hey, that was more down to the RAM rather than the graphics card or processor. Honestly, considering it was a £7 laptop and only supports DirectX 10.1 titles at max, it runs virtually all of them that are actually on the DX10 API, meaning it's quite a decent laptop for that era of gaming. Maybe not always with the best visuals or performance, but it does an admiral job and is very portable and doesn't actually get very hot or loud. Still, that didn't stop us having a lot of fun with it. Midway through benchmarking, we had the entire Discord joining me for some GTA Online shenanigans, which actually has some decent performance on the laptop that in turn led to some even more dumb shenanigans. See, I would normally touch on normal usability, but with that SSD and little Core 2 Duo powering through, it felt even snappier than that newer AMD A10 laptop we used on the channel just a few weeks ago. At no point at all did I ever make a Discord account, join my own Discord server, and then possibly try to find random servers to join all on the laptop as a bit of a test. This isn't to say it's all plain sailing for this PC, for a media PC, it did a better job decoding its own Blu-ray discs internally than it did with any modern playback medium. YouTube needed x264 to run 720p HD, and although 60fps or 1080p was feasible, if the video was heavy with lots of busy stuff going on, you would drop frames or even crash the browser. But yeah, for most things, gaming or use related, it did remarkably better than a lot of us would have ever expected. In conclusion, this was definitely not anywhere near as robust as my last cheap laptop I found with similar specs, which was that Dell Studio 1556 if my memory's right, which had a slightly dodgy screen but was definitely a lot less hassle than this laptop proved to be. 
I'd argue though that this laptop's actually better to use. It's got great speakers, a brilliant screen, the keyboard's brilliant, it's full size. It would really make a great Windows XP era laptop given it's got so many multimedia outputs. But then again, I couldn't get XP or anything prior to Windows 10 to install. Linux did work, but only damn small Linux, nothing modern. That and again, the laptop is more than capable of carrying through virtual machines, which I did test. In fact, virtually anything you throw at this laptop for £7, it does a really remarkable job. So those Core 2 Duos, they hold up a lot better than that entire 10 year series where we just got nothing but AMD A laptops. So I hope you enjoyed this mess of a laptop. Thank you very much for watching and good night. So if you want to see more dumb cheap laptop videos I can always get a hold of some more and if you'd like to support us there's always Patreon and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content just like this.